What the CBN is saying here is that there might not be any concerns, uh, particularly the fears that have been expressed in the past days. If, as we speak right now, over 90% of the financial transaction we've had at the individual level is within the transaction limit. I think the concern has to do with individuals' level also because when you look at the, the vulnerable Nigerians, mm -hmm. you are talking about the man, the, 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 the casual worker, you are talking about the man that works in the site, you are talking about the engineer that has to pay that man cash. That, I think that's where Nigerians were particular about. Mm -hmm. You are talking about the rural area, you're talking about the man that wants to go to farm and maybe wants to go to the market to buy a um, 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 farm product. And he's holding. He, he wants to hold like a hundred thousand naira cash. He wants to get there. He buy this. He buy that. And with the inflationary figure that we have now, hundred thousand naira before it used to be like maybe you say like uh, you're going to the market almost two hundred thousand. But now it's less than that, and the goods have also gone up. Mm -hmm. I think that's the where CBN did not take into account because if you say that uh, average like about five hundred thousand, um, the individual don't withdraw above that five hundred thousand. You need to look at it at which context. Is it when the exchange rate or when these goods and services are within? Mm -hmm. So you know a lot of things have happened. You're saying that the dynamics are changing the, fast. It is changing fast. But CBN is relying on the data it's obtained, saying that people in the remote locations are concerned about have now embraced online banking. They have, but again, I don't think, uh, I mean, they have the data. We don't have the data. They are just rolling, rolling out the data. And that's why they said you need to engage stakeholders so that mm -hmm. they know what you are doing. Now, if you look at that figure, it was saying that in almost every location you have banks there. It was saying that in almost every location you have um, previous terminals. It's saying that you have a microfinance bank. I, I agree with the essence that you may have microfinance bank, but how efficient are these microfinance bank in terms of infrastructure? Mm. Then again, when you talk about POS terminal, they, are, they seem to be one of the people people have been talking about. But they have come in to say most people in the rural area don't do above 20. But when you talk about the banking space in the rural area, I don't think we have so much of those banking space in the rural area. Especially, they are not, bringing, they are not taking into concern the security challenges that we have in the rural area. I don't think there's any bank in Bama. I don't think there's any bank in, a, 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 towards the Lake Chad area of, 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 of Bruno State. Even if you go to Kaduna and Brinning, I don't think any bank branch is open in those places because of the security challenges that are happening in some part in Kaksina. In even in some parts in the east. So we need to look at peculiarity with the challenges that we are going through now, looking at it by and by the policy that we are doing. I think that is what I feel the lawmakers should be talking about, not really talking about, uh, oh, um, this, I have a right to my money. I know in any part of the world, there's a certain limit that you can withdraw cash. It is done, it is, it's a global best practice. But with 500K per week, POS operators are not going to be really adversely affected. Well, they have not come out clearly to tell us that the POS operators are among those that will benefit from the 500000 per week. They said, mm -hmm. said, they said for individuals, they have not gone to the POS, so I need, they need to address that. Mm -hmm. That means for individuals, and that means when you talk about individuals, you are not talking about individuals that are close to the banking, or you cannot withdraw that by the, P, by the POS or the ATM. They are, mm -hmm. they, the review of the ATM of 20000 naira every day still stands, I mean 20000 per day and 100000 in a week. Still stands. Or the POS terminal cannot do more than 100,000. Still stands. Mm. What they are saying now is for individuals to walk into the banking space and, and you'll be able to withdraw 500,000. Wow. So um, the previous um, regulations as to not um, having ATMs dispensed, 1,000 naira, I think they say it's going to be 200, 200. naira and 100 naira. I, I think um, basically, even if you go to the if you go to UK, for example, and you give somebody uh, 50 pounds, they look at you like you are weird. Uh. <laughs> they, they prefer to collect the 20 pounds. So when you look at global, if you go to the, the United States too, really when you want to use their POS terminal, they come up with lower, lower denomination. So I don't think it's out of place. But because, I keep saying, because of some of our goods and services are not even priced in Kobo. You don't even have the Kobo. So you normally see the round... It boils round, down to the value yeah, of the Yeah, you round it up. Mm. So that's why I think a lot of people are having challenges. It's mm. not because it's a problem, because they are talking about um, in the area you withdraw 20,000. Then you're looking at the security implication of 200,000. If I have to um, withdraw 100,000 in a day, it looks bulky in my mm. pocket, and that could attract um, mm. uh, um, 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 people to me mm. that may want to rob. And so I think that's why people are... It's not because 
200 Naira note withdrawn from the ATM. Sometimes you go to this ATM to withdraw these notes. Ordinarily, they should come up with those uh, ones of some of the best note needs. Note. But you don't see that once you get to withdraw it's very dirty notes from the ATM Indeed. terminals. So All I right. Think, very quickly, we are going to take a look at what the benefits are for, for, for these um, limitations and transaction or what CBN says the benefits will be in a short while. But George has called in from Ikeja. Good morning, George. Good morning, Nifemi, and uh, good morning to Mukta. Good morning. Uh, Nifemi, the, in this life, it's not what you do per se that counts. It's what lies behind it. This cashless policy has been in existence before uh, Metele came to CBN, and it's been progressing uh, gradually. But all of a sudden, uh, the tone just changed. Why that sudden change? That is what is at play here. The argument being put forward by CBN officials that if you curb insecurity and all that, I don't buy it. There was a time a relation of the CBN governor was kidnapped and they demanded 200 million uh, naira. They should ask Mr. Emetriele whether he paid that money through transfer or by cash. So the, the argument that if we curb insecurity, kidnapping, and all that cannot work. Even the kidnappers themselves are already demanding that they want the new notes, new notes that, that are even scarce to get. It will further make people to become vulnerable to kidnapping. That is that. The volume of transactions in this country, we all know that both people in the rural areas don't have this banking attitude. The CBN is supposed to be doing a persuasive policy that will make people to get interested in banking. Now, people are not even interested because you, you can't go to a bank and say you want a loan to do one business or the other and get it easily. If you put money in the bank to take it out, they find it difficult. Those are the things that the CBN should be addressing, not just taking things, you know, and imposing it on the people without minding the level of enlightenment of the people. You can't take a policy above the level of the people as they stand in, the, in terms of enlightenment. That is what is bringing up. I get your point, them. Mr. George. Uh, it, it would also seem that the CBM is listening if, um, if the withdrawal limit has been reviewed upwards and if the processing fees have also been reviewed downwards. But um, what the deputy CBM governor said yesterday was the fact that the whole essence of this is to encourage more people to come into the former payment system. And he mentioned the idea of kidnapping. So we've seen a lot of kidnapping for ransom in the outgoing year, and it's been in cash, allegedly. Perhaps it's also going to resolve it, because there is no cash to give you. If you're asking for 200 million, that means I will have to transfer the money to you, and that may be a bit more traceable, don't you think? For me, I think it was more of both. You see, what CBI was doing is they've looked at their economic policies. These policies were not really working, especially their direct intervention. And it was not work, it wasn't working, it was not that it was not working because it's a bad policy, but it was not working because um, the security aspect of it, which is the physical side. Mm -hmm. So CBN need to stylishly go in there. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, it it will cut a banditry, it will cut a terrorism. It will, remember immediately this policy came to play, uh, even not even this policy, the uh, redesign of the Naira note. You realize that terrorists in the lecture region started saying they don't need Naira again, they need to be paid them in safer. So it also is a big challenge to them also. Mm. And I was in the north some while ago and I spoke to some people, they said ah, there are a lot of cash that these kidnappers have collected that they use inside the bush and also use for purchase of arm and everything. They cannot even return those cash into the banking space. So it's more or less like those money will just slide there and will be of no use to them. Mm. So definitely, it, no matter how you see that, they will be start asking. At the point, they say they will start asking from dollar. That's what uh, uh, um, um, Gumi said. Gumi said the kidnappers will start asking for dollars. And even in asking for dollars, you need to withdraw Naira to go to the brood exchange. And the brood exchange, so definitely, they have put spine on their wheel. That's the truth, mm. security-wise. It's going to be tough for them. But like um, Mr. George said, the only challenge we have to do with those that are victims. Uh -huh. You know, when, when you are not victims, it's easy for you to talk about this policy to talk about. But once you are a victim, which means that your people need to solve for this money, they want you alive, uh -huh. that is where the challenge will come.
Ibrahim has called in from Quarry. Just a yeah, minute, uh, Mr. Mukta. Good morning, Ibrahim. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead. All right. The data that the CBN brought to us hmm. that you just mentioned that about how many trillions that was being transacted on the POS and other electronic um, means of transaction, I don't think they have been fear about it because. I'm a POS operator. One day, for one customer, I've withdraw more than 500,000 Naira for a customer. And it's just ordinary people like me also, using it for business. And I've also gone to one bank in Omara, first bank to be precise. I wanted to withdraw to use the money for POS transaction. But I was told that the bank had to go outside to the POS there and go and withdraw. So where are we taking it to? That's my take. Thank you. It's all right. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. interesting to the mm -hmm. fact that um, I, I think the CBN actually has a limit. Let me tell something about the PO. The POS um, terminal has become a conduit pipe for corrupt, for fraudulent activities. Mm -hmm. All the fraudsters now they use the PO, POS terminals. We've seen that have EFCC have arrested a lot. We've seen that happen to people. I've seen that happen to a friend of mine two weeks ago where somebody fraudulently um, sells goods to them on the, on, on, on the social media space mm. and they needed to, to do the withdrawal. The person will go to, the money goes into his account. He doesn't go to the bank to withdraw it. He goes to the POS terminal to withdraw it. Mm. So definitely the POS terminal itself has become a condi part where, where those fraudulent um, activities are taken care of. Because mm. if the POS terminal, the POS terminal, all idea of the POS terminal was not meant to meet people that could withdraw 500,000, 100,000. It was basically to, meet the, to make the, the right people that are unbankable, bankable. And what we are looking at that, we are looking at people that will come to withdraw 20,000, 10,000, 8,000, 2,000 even. Mm. That's what the POS terminal was meant for. The POS terminal was meant to make business easy for the, for the informal sector, especially the woman that is selling in the, in, 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 in the market, you know, buying that, okay, look, ATM is not always working. Okay, you have a POS, I can go beside there, buy those goods and collect that money. So it's even out of place for a POS terminal to be able to do one transaction of 500. And by the time you investigate some of those transactions, they are transactions that were done fraudulently. Somebody is uh, um, um, hacking into somebody's account and is using the POS. How, so, how do we deal with that without infringing with the economic um, nature of this business? Because um, politicians would tell you that this is an employer of labor to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of young Nigerians. When you look at that, you also look at the hundreds of thousands of Nigerians that will be losing their money to those point too. You mustn't look at a situation just one-sided because it's creating employment that you need to overlook the security aspect of it. Right. Because some people are earn money has gone to the POS terminal. Mm -hmm. What you should be looking at is what is the security implication of if we have to do You need to sit down with the regulators and say, look, let's reject this thing. Like I was telling somebody, if you say I want to withdraw above 500000 a week in, in, in the bank, I need to feel from that, that, that to the MD. Then if a COS terminal is supposed to do above 100000 a week, let them, you can, sometimes you go to the bank when you want to withdraw a particular sum of money. They take your thumb, they, you, you have to do your thumb print, you have to do your facial recognition before they now will give you that money. I think those should be applied to the CBN, um, to the POS terminal. Mm -hmm. If you are able to create that infrastructure for them, then you begin to say, okay, fine. It will reduce fraudulent activities, then the job that you are creating for them will remain. CBN is not just talking about the aspect of it whereby uh, money, they, they, they are looking at also the people that are committing fraud through the POS terminal. And then, because they, 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 the responsibility of PBN is to their customers also where they are keeping money for, not just for the employer of labor, which is the POS terminal. So the question is not whether or not the cashless policy is beneficial. The question is, are we really ready? So let us take the electronic banking system as an example. My personal concern has been with the reversal of failed transaction. So with cash, it's dependable. If I'm in the market and I want to buy something for my children for Christmas, I'm certain that I have cash with me. But then imagine that I pay for an item and then the money is taken from my account and then the guy I'm paying to doesn't get the money. But the bank is telling me that I have to wake some seven working days. They do not even comply with the CBN provision of, you know, 24 hours, 72 hours. It is very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. For many Nigerians. So you want to question why are we not focusing on making this system seamless? as a prerequisite to driving us forcefully that's where we, into that, a line of That's where infrastructure comes. Mm. That's what I think the CBA should partner with them. It's all about infrastructure. 
those reversal, those things, that it's all about infrastructure. Mm. We need to build sound infrastructure. I have a challenge with the CBM policy that has to, we need to look at the cyber security aspect of it. You, you're talking about when you have about 82% of Nigeria, now you're, you're taking it up. And you see that if you listen to the report that have been released by NDIC, how many banks were fraudulently, mm. uh, I mean, were, 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 were defrauded, I mean, frauded in terms of money, then you begin to ask yourself, how much have this been able, and sometimes these things are, this, for, this um, crime are carried out in Canada with staffs in the bank. We've seen a lot of investigation. That. So they need to look at that area of cyber security and begin to say, how can we improve upon it? How can we get more people into the banking space? How can they be secure in their transaction? I think, and again, you're talking about reversa. I've said it in developed economy in the world. Once you do a transaction and it's, you said, okay, this transaction did not, did not follow through because the man on the other end is saying, I did not receive it. Mm. Immediately, they sort it out for you. Why they go behind to investigate whether this money got there or not. Or then not. They, they do the reversal letter. After but, all, you have but, an account so with them. You can't keep somebody money for seven days. You are telling the person to fill a form. That then you are telling the person that will. So what I think the CBN should do, you need to look at how much is in that person's account. Does he have enough if, if, if by chance, this money has actually gone out for us to retrieve our money back. Mm. So those are technicalities that the CBA need to look at. Because even in developed economy, you do a transaction of 500000 Or even, let me use the America, America for instance. You do a transaction of $1,000 to an individual. It takes two days for the individual. The individual will see that money is in account, but he will not be able to, um, to, 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 to suspend it yet. Because they are going to wait to see, is it really true that... <laughs> This transaction and they have used that to reverse a lot of fraudulent activity. So then the bank need to build the infrastructure to be able to meet timely resolving of cases because that's the greatest challenge. Because you are telling somebody that has only twenty thousand in, in in his bank account, mm. he's going to withdraw and he wants to use it for for, for he, he needs to withdraw like fifteen thousand and he goes to the ATM, he puts his ATM. His ACA debit him of fifteen thousand and did not did not pay him. Mm. Now you are telling him to wait for under mm -hmm. one week. For the money. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes it, it is the attitude of the banks for me at times. So I had a particular experience where there's a daily limit of 50k on this particular account, and then I was trying to make transfer transaction of 50k, it didn't go, and then I made another transfer of 50k, and the bank was telling me that both transactions were successful. So I was asking them, how was I able to make hundred thousand naira transfer on an account that has a daily limit Ooh, of 50k? I mean, uh, it's. It's the way a manner they go with it, and then it drags for long, and you wonder if, you know, we have a system that is working. Vanessa has called in from Abuja. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead with your contribution. Okay, so I wanted to just comment on uh, your guest said concerning uh, dispensing in smaller units. Uh, country that, countries like the USA or, uh, or England, you know, that dispense in smaller units, you could tell that their money has value. But if you look at here, if we are going to be, if we are going to have a limit of 100,000 naira a week and then you're dispensing uh, 200 naira or 100 naira, what exactly is someone going to be able to, to buy as much as this, with, uh, this money in smaller units? So you would see that this, I think that this will create a strain on, on the economy and the people because they might have to now go into trade by BAPA. They might not just have exceeded my limit for this equity. In fact, are you giving me? And this, I would give you this instead. Let us do an exchange or something like that. So I don't really think that Nigeria is ready for this in particular. It is, it's, a brilliant, it's a brilliant policy, but I feel that the country is not really ready for this right now. Implementation is also another thing, Vanessa. Let's wait to 31st of January and I'll see <laughs> and see how it goes. Thank you so much for your contribution. Mm -hmm. Vanessa was not listening to me. You know, I uh, brought yes. up on that. Yeah. With the inflation mm -hmm. figure... A hundred thousand before it might doesn't, not, might not be and that it. CBN's data CBN might not be data. in in accordance with reality. I think again, um, we see you have to look at the CBN because even in the CBN website, you also have a place whereby you report any transaction that is not reversed to mm -hmm. you within the past the next twenty four hours. Even supposed to pay fine, pay you fine, fine. like ten thousand or whatever. So, but I think I said something initially. I said what has made us make so much not about the cashless policy. Mm. We have not seen people that break that rule being punished for doing what they, are, they have right. done. So until we begin to punish people based on what is set as a, as a law, mm. we won't get the kind of result we should get. Mm. I think for me, that is a take. And uh, Reverend Dominic, he seems to have so much money. 
That's why it's even the bank that allowed him to know that he has five withdrawals. I mean, five reverses. Five reverses. That, that means there was so money in the account, it was just, <laughs> it was just keep doing what he was So he should thank the bank that the banks did not even tell him. Just. So for me, I think um, the reversal issue is what the CBN should be looking at also. Mm. How can they help mm. in that era? But you know the challenge again when the people tell you in terms of reversal is um, we don't have data. In these developed economies, that reversal is done immediately. They have your data, they know where you stay, they have your social security number, they know where you work, they know what your income is. They, mm. You know, That's they have all these things. So if I do it for you, I know that your next paycheck or the next one, I'm going to collect the money in whatever form, if by chance that money actually went through and you have spent it. So, but in Nigeria, yeah, we've seen issues where somebody was, uh, I mean, was arrested recently by the um, 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 fraud, the um, Amiati fraud mm -hmm. in um, the, the, is it the special fraud unit in Ikoi, okay. that a payment was made mistakenly into his account. And he kept withdrawing that money. And even when they called him and said, look, this money does not belong to you, the person said he made mistakenly paid that money. He refused. He kept on withdrawing that money. So, and you go to the bank, I always issue somebody has a POS issue, like I was saying, the money was withdrawn out of his account. He was able to trace it that this money was fraudulently obtained from me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to buy goods and the service, that service was not rendered to me. And the person has fraudulently withdrawn my money. And they, he said, can that account be blocked? And they told, they told her that that account has been involved. I mean, a lot of people have even complained about that account. But yet, they don't have the power to stop a transaction on that account. Hmm. Except you go to the police, the police, you do a police report, then they bring it to the bank and say, so it's all bureaucracy, it's all buckle next Very clumsy. Before you do that, the person has finished all what they want to do. So I think... And we have the data, I mean, Mr. Mukta. There's a lot to do. There's the BVN, there's the NIN. The question is, what are we doing with them? But are you concerned that people are not getting these new notes? I mean... This well, is, I, I made, there's a I deadline made, for that to first I made, I made a scenario to January. somebody, they said, I mean, I, I, I can't speak the Yoruba very friendly, and they said in Yoruba land, they said there's an adage that say he that they are bringing wife to, you don't need to stand up. Just mm. sit down where you were. You are, the wife will come. Why are you standing up? The wife will come and meet you. So for me, I don't think we still have from now to January. Okay. So why are we so much in the haste to There's still the enough time. There's still enough time. Mm. And if it doesn't work, then they may will, they say the old and the new will work very fast. So you collect the old or you collect the new, it's still a legal tender. Mm. So for me, I'm not bothered about whether it's old or new. No, I know people that are bothered and those the that are so much. The implication of delaying the Naira notes would be the the um, um, the eleventh hour rush. The CBN said banks are Bye. open on Saturday yes. for you to bring in the, the old Naira. Let me tell you something. Mm. What you need to know is that liquidity squeeze is part of the two to control inflation. Mm. So, so cash if the cash is cash. Yeah. Um, um, when you go cashless, it helps you control inflation. You don't have, the CBN deputy governor said we have the order for 500 million to be printed. Now, out of that 500 million, you don't expect that those 500 million will be printed from now to January. Okay. It's also a two. It could be 500 million, and all they will print now is maybe 100 million. They will gradually want to, you don't put all the whole 500 million into the system at a go. Then yeah. you create inflation. I already know inflation is, is high. See, those are questions that I expect. Let me, but um, the, another interesting development is the fact that some traders are not accepting this new note. Yeah. Uh, there's a video online of, um, I think it was a bus conductor who said, there's no way I'm collecting it. And the fear is substantiated. I have seen videos where people clean the Naira notes with cloth, the new ones, and then the color, there is a color bleeding happening. You don't know whether it's the fake you're holding. What do you think have been done? Perhaps proper awareness to encourage people to take it because it, it's it's one thing to have the new Naira notes. If you, if you can't spend it, that's also not good PR for the CBN. Yeah, the CBN said it. Um, one of the reasons that they were re redesigning the Naira note was for security yeah. to be able to make sure that they deal with um, the fake There's notes, no counterfeiting. counterfeiting that is already in in the system. And uh, I think I said in your program was it on Tuesday that the CBN need to do a lot of enlightenment. Those days. When you collect the note, they want to take the, the fake one. When you go to the market, you raise it up like this. 
and you see the code of arm or this and that, you begin to know whether it's the real one. But that was because they were, they were, they, there was already tension. Mm -hmm. They told them what to expect. They told, them, they told the market woman what to look out for. And then you know, maybe the CBN was really listening because just this morning or yesterday, this morning, I saw them preparing you know, on security features security to look, features are look out to, to know. Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes a lot of things happen in the social media. The same way you are saying somebody is rejecting this note. I was in Cardinal last week. Somebody also was rejecting the old note. I mean, a, a Kekena Pep guy was telling the guy that he will not collect the old note or less <laughs> the new note because. So it all boiled down to. There is no enlightenment. Indeed. You need to enlighten Nigeria. So that's where I think the CBM has really failed mm -hmm. in this their policy. They, they, where, what's the national orientation in GSC? Do they partner with them? Ministry of Information. You don't just give information only by the side of government. This also is a national information. How much are we partnering with the media house, with on social media? Every aspect I expected I that CBM should be the one that are trending in terms of enlightenment, not trending in terms of complain or what people say this is fake or no, but they should be trending. They should be enlightening over a hundred and something million Nigerians. Half Nigerians in the diaspora when they, when they say, look, they, 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 they learned that this Naira note will, will sue me. They were even giving it to people, please just pay it into my bank and change it. And it, I mean, somebody was coming and saying, my wife have up to 50,000. Will there be, you know? So you need and to enlighten them. You need to enlighten Nigerians. That information is not going out. That's why somebody is saying, I don't want, that's why somebody is saying, shouting that I've not seen the note where we are from 90 January. So definitely they need to be an enlightenment. <laughs>